A few months ago, I released my Inside the Cockpit episode on the Messerschmitt ME262. And it seems that in part two of that video, there was a moment that caused some confusion and some raised eyebrows due to the following scene. On the rear side of the fuselage, we also have flare dispensers operated by the pilot inside the cockpit. So welcome back to Military Aviation History. I'm your host Bismarck and I'd like to clarify this little scene there because following the release of the video, one reoccurring question in the comment section was indeed why did the ME262 need flares as during World War II heat-seeking or IR missiles had yet to be invented? The simple answer is that while nowadays the word flare is often used to denote an inferent countermeasure employed to confuse well, an incoming heat-seeking missile, in the context of World War II, well, we are talking about signaling flares right there. These generally came with three, sometimes four different uh, colors and cartridges. Usually it's white, red or green as standard equipment on many planes, whether a fighter or bomber. And sometimes you had some other colors mixed in between as well. These are also different from illumination flares used to mark or light up a target during the night. Signaling flares were used in various ways, mainly as coded communication between flights or between aircraft and indeed ground, the ground forces. For example, a group of bombers could assemble in a formation because the lead bombardier would fire a coded flare, a message previously arranged for that flight. The formation could also be alerted to navigational changes via a flare rather than using, well, the radio. Also, on returning to an airfield, a plane could actually identify itself by firing a prearranged combination of colors or even alert the airfield that it has sustained damage or has wounded aboard. This system I already saw use during World War I indeed and was naturally continued. Some planes used a standard flare gun for this. Uh, several cartridges would be stored inside of the plane. If it was a fighter, the cockpit, and a bomber, there would be a dedicated space. And the pilot or the crew manually reloaded the gun with each cartridge, one after the other. In some aircraft, the pilot had to open the canopy or window and then fire the flare into the empty sky. In others, for example, in the B of 109, you had a mounting for the gun, making the process uh, slightly more user-friendly. Uh, the same applies to planes like the P-51. Uh, quoting here from the pilot's manual, 17. Signal, pistol and cartridges. There is a stowage for a Type M8 pyrotechnic pistol incorporated in the pistol cartridge storage bag on the left-hand cockpit wall. A firing mounting is located just forward of the stowage bag and holster. A cap chained to the mount covers the port when the pistol is not installed. The question now is of course how come the signal flare dispensers are mounted so far aft of the cockpit in the ME262. There's no way that the pilot you know, could turn around and reach and reload a signal gun from that position. The system used here is a different one and electric, already used on some other planes of the time. Here this individual signal flares are released by pressing a button or by flicking a switch from inside the cockpit. As uh, shown in the episode in question, we actually have the ME262 release buttons. Uh, these controls are located forward inside the cockpit on the starboard control panel. Generally, a number of cartridges per color were available, but this always depended on the system and the aircraft. For example, in early uh, Supermarine Spitfires, some changes actually reduced the number of cartridges that the aircraft had. From the pilot manual, 75 control handles for releasing the parachute flares carried in the rear fuselage are located on the port side of the cockpit. The handles should be pulled upwards to release the flares. On later airplanes, only one flare is carried and only one handle is provided. In the Mark 9 manual then for the Supermarine Spitfire it says, 32 signal discharger. The recognition device fires one of six cartridges out of the top of the rear fuselage when the handle to the left of the pilot's seat is pulled upwards. 
On some aircraft, a pre-selector control is mounted above the operating handle. Similar systems continued to be used. Uh, you'll find them on the post-World War II aircraft, like the MiG-15, for example. So next time, actually, you go to a museum, have a look around if you can find one of those signal dispensers on some of the vintage aircraft. Their shape and size is often the same, and usually you can even spot the color coding of the individual flares. While this might now in hindsight, seem a little bit obvious. Like I said, initially it makes sense. Some people actually got confused by this. Good thing all of you asked. That actually made it obvious that there might have been an issue here and that a bit of clarification was needed. To be honest, there are no stupid questions in that regard. It's, it's good that you guys stepped forward. Also, a bit of housekeeping on my side. In part two of the video, I actually made a mistake. Uh, the pin comment corrected it, but to make sure that more people are actually aware of this, uh, the circular antenna you see on the top of the ME262 on the back there is not from the IFF system. That one would be on the starboard side facing downwards. Uh, the pile ramen or the loop antenna on top is for the radio directional finding. It's actually standard equipment on German aircraft and I actually really don't understand how that mistake made it past my attention in the end. Um, well, we're all humans. I hope you all enjoyed this quick video and if you did enjoy the show and also the Inside the Cockpit videos, consider supporting me over Patreon or now we also have channel memberships here on YouTube. Um, that is actually what allows me to travel to you know, museums and film more episodes and there's a lot of good content coming up. As always, have a great day, good hunting and see you in the sky.